I'm Sue Francisco. I'm back again to teach you how to draw a mule. If you have read Tales of the Towpath, you might recognize this illustration. That was meant by, uh, it was drawn by Dennis Gerhardt, the artist who illustrated the book, Tales of the Towpath. Now, it helps to remember when you're drawing something or even when you're doing anything at all. If you have a big job and it looks complicated, try to break it down into smaller pieces. What we're going to do is look for the shapes that make up the mule's body. The first two big shapes are a circle here, and we'll make another circle for the front of his body. So what we're going to do is just make two circles. Now make sure they're in the middle of your paper, because you're going to put stuff all around them. So you're going to make one circle for the back of his body, and you're going to make another one that overlaps it for the front of his body. And they can be, if you want, they can be more like eggs. So what we're going to do is, off the top of one circle, we're going to put a line, and then we're going to come down the circle a little bit. This is pretty much where his shoulder is. We're going to make another line that's a little bit shorter underneath that. And that'll be his neck. Now you see? Now, what I like to do next is think about the mule really does not look like two big bubbles, does he? So what we're going to do is we're going to go from the back of the neck all the way over the top and down the tail and make him a backbone before we do anything else. Straight across, halfway around the back, and we're going to make him a tail. Okay, now again underneath, right, we're going to join those two things together and make the bottom of him. Alright, now he does need a head. <laughs> Shall we put a head on our mule? Now you might notice a mule has a very long face. So, what we're going to do is make the head in two parts. We're going to make the top of his head with kind of an oval, an egg shape, that kind of hangs down off the neck piece. And that's only the top of his head, right? Because he doesn't have a round face like a human. He's got a long, long nose. So what we're going to do then, when we have the top of the face, and remember, it's just a shape to represent it, and then we go around all these shapes later. We're going to come down a little bit. Let's make him a really long nose about here. We're going to just put a little circle right down here, just a space there, so that we know that he has a long face that ends here. And we're going to go right down the forehead, around that little circle, and back up to our little oval. And there is his long face, or a shape that represents it. Now he's starting to look a little bit like the mule. Now, well, Mules need ears. The thing about a mule is he does have big ears like a bunny rabbit. They're narrow and they're long and they're like big triangles. And you can make them, he can move them any way he wants. So he can move them forward or backward or one this way and one that way. You just make your mule any way you think his ears should go. So what I do then is I draw the ground that he stands on. And this is what Mr. Gerhard has done as well. He's drawn the line that the mule stands on to represent the ground so that when he makes his legs, he knows where that line should end. And the mule will appear to be standing on solid ground. So we're going to draw the ground. Right. So we're going to try, we're going to try this, this leg first because he's stepping, he's lifting this leg up to walk. So when we make a line, we go down to where his knee would be. And if you want to, you can draw a little circle for his knee. Don't have to. We're going to make it double. Then we're going to bend it back at about the same length here. We're going to go, and then we're going to make a little triangle at the end for his hoof. Right? Because that's his foot. And there we have a mule who's picking up his front leg to walk. The other leg goes straight down to the ground, kind of behind this one. So again, we're going down to the ground that he stands on. Making that line double. You can put the knee in the middle, because it's in the middle, about the same place. And then we have a little triangle on the end for his hoof. And he's standing solidly on the ground. The back legs also go under his body. So in order to make the back legs bend under his body, they kind of look like our elbows more than knees, right? So again, you're going to make a line that looks like an elbow before you go down to the ground. Make it double. And this back here, where the leg bends, it's actually not called a knee. In the back, it's called a hop. That's the mule's hop. And then this leg is way out in the back just because he looks like he's pulling something, so he's pushing with that leg. 
I put his tail in the front, but here's how you would do that. And then down to the ground and put his foot on. So now you have the outline of your mule. But he doesn't look like a mule yet, right? But this is where you can actually start to draw now. Now, well, he doesn't look perfect, right? I'm going to make my outline. This is what we call an outline. And I'm going to go around my shapes. And if I make something a little bit bigger, if I make it a little rounder, if I give him a chin, if I give him a nose, if I start giving him a face, put his eye in, right? Okay. Uh, might be about there. Now I'm going to start drawing him, actually drawing. So I'm going to make his ears nice, right? And, and you're thinking, well, you can put some muscles in his legs if you're a little too skinny. I can give him hair on his tail. Here we start to do the details. And you're wondering, well, what about all these lines? Well, I'm drawing with a charcoal pencil. So I can't erase my lines. So you really don't need to erase very much either because the next thing we're going to do, after we've drawn him a little bit, is we're going to put some texture onto him. And we're also going to think about shading. And shading has to do with the way the light falls on your subject. Now, this is an animal. He's probably outside. And you can see that the top has been left light because the sun is shining on his back. So we're thinking about light and dark. And that's what makes him look a little bit more three-dimensional. And also, you see, this is an artist's trick. Now you know that Mr. Gerhard, who drew this, is a professional artist because he's done two things at once with one kind of line. He's done shading. He's thought about which areas should be dark and which should be light. And he's also done texturing because a mule is actually furry. He actually has fur. He actually has hair. So what he's done is he's put a lot of little up and down lines all over the mule to represent the hair. And you see what I'm doing? I won't need to erase, I wouldn't need to erase very much, and neither will you. Once your mule is all covered up with these texture lines, and you're going to put more of them underneath where it would be dark, and you're going to leave the top of him light where the sun would be shining, and you're going to make little tiny short, it's just like you're drawing pieces of grass or something, you know? Little tiny up and down lines all over him, except on the top where he's brighter. We have a dark mule. Yeah. I need to tell you about a lot of times when you see mules, if you see them in a magazine or a picture or something, you're going to see them with no hair on their neck. That's because they give it. They get a haircut for work on their neck, so their collar will fit better. Now you can. You can kind of see in Mr. Gerhardt's drawing, he's drawn the collar that the mule wears to pull, and he's drawn the harness, and he's drawn the trace here that would be going back to whatever the mule is pulling. If you want to put the harness on your mule, you can. But a mule, if you don't give him a haircut, a mule, actually being half horse and half donkey, he usually gets a long tail and a long mane from his mother the horse. And then if we cut it off to work, then you don't see it very often. So here's something else I can cover up, you know, some lines with if I put his mane and his tail here on it. And really, I wouldn't have to erase very much at all, just up in here. And there's your mule. There he is. And if your mule doesn't look exactly like Mr. Gerhardt's, yeah, that's absolutely fine. It looks like your mule. My, my mule looks like mine, and your mule looks like yours, and that's the way it should be.